I want to talk to you today about a single-ended tube amp, about six watts per channel, that cost me next to nothing. Hello, welcome to Lancaster Hi-Fi. For this video, I thought it would be interesting to show a console amp from console to shelf top from being integrated in a console to being a standalone amplifier, in this case, an integrated amp. Back on April 1st, 2022, I bought this Westinghouse console. I can't remember whether it worked or not. Maybe. I can't remember how much I paid for it. Maybe $40, but whatever it was, was comparable to the price of the gas that it took to get there. I drove from Corvallis to Woodburn, Oregon, to get it. We brought it back, took out the amplifier, and have tried to get this console amp to work. I am currently, as far as I know, playing music into it, and I'm not getting any out. Now, it is powered up. The tubes are hot. And the way I've done it is to bridge two of the connections on this Molex plug here. And that's typically how the switching is done on these things. There's a, you know, some wires that come out of the back and go to a Molex plug, which plugs into somewhere where there's a switch. And it sat on my shelf for quite a while. Until last June. So, until June 2024. So, uh, more than two years it sat on my to-do list, which is you know, essentially my shelf. So I, over two years after it, I had gotten it, I finally took it back off the shelf. I wanted to build at least one tube amp last summer. Turns out that's the only one that I built. And it was the one that required the least work. I am working on this Westinghouse console amp. And I want to get it just working in stock condition. Minimal interference rehabilitation at this point. The power switch would have gone... Uh, through cables to this hole, through this hole to a power switch. So I've just bypassed that by connecting this to this black wire here. So that should give me high voltage. And here we've got the rectifier, the secondary coming into the rectifier and the high voltage coming off. Uh, drops through this resistor here, which is like 220 ohms about. Doesn't it go first to a capacitor? Yeah, go to a capacitor, resistor, capacitor, and then that's the plate voltage. Here are the lines going to the output transformers. And then uh, come back over here. Blah, 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 blah. We can see the, the filament supplies. Uh, this is done, I would say, quite sloppily. The only one that's mildly twisted, the only pair that's mildly twisted is this pair going to the rectifier. The rest are just forming big old loops all over the place, which is just going to be radiating all sorts of AC at 60 hertz, so that's kind of shitty. Those, those need to be twisted, even if I keep it in relatively stock circuit configuration. Let's see, the main capacitors in here... Up. You're not super far out of spec. They're supposed to be 40, 40, 30, 30. And it's more like, you know, 56, 46, 33, and 33. So the 30s aren't too bad. That 40's not too bad. The first 40 is pretty bad. That'll still function well enough in the very short term, even though that overcapacitance indicates that those are leaking. What are really bad are these blocking capacitors. Uh, coupling capacitors, this one, this one, this one, and this one. And those are all way out of spec. They're all way over the spec capacitance, which means likely that they are leaking DC and um, may cause red plating if I simply turn it on even. Not that I noticed red plating when I have turned it on just once, but those should be replaced straight away, and I can do that. That's no problem. 22 nanofarads and 47 nanofarads. Easy peasy. Trying to track down the problem in this amplifier. Disconnected feedback or put the feedback resistors to ground. 
And now we're looking at the plates out of the second tube in the amp. Now the signal at the grid on that bad channel isn't so great either. See the B channel is looking just peachy. But the A channel, not only is it fucked up, but it's really low amplitude. Note that B, looking at the plate there, is on a 2 volts per division scale. The other is at 100 millivolts per division scale. Okay, replaced the uh, plate resistor here. See the new resistor there. The old one had pretty much failed completely open. So that was an open circuit, so we're getting no, maybe not even any voltage. I didn't check the voltage to see what it was. Now we've got channel A is the one that used to be bad and is now fine. Notice the, uh, the magnitudes are still different. I suspect that that can be explained with component values that have drifted, but specifically on that part of the circuit. Probably if we changed all these resistors, and particularly the other plate resistor here, that we might fall back into line with one another. Well, I haven't checked with the balance control. I'll, I'll see if I can get these two signals to line up with the balance. Now, of course, this is without negative feedback, but what I want to show here is that we're just shy of the onset of clipping. You can see how distorted the waveform is, how it's way more rounded on the upper half. And that's at 4 volts. 4 volts, 4, 5, 4 times 4, 16 divided by 8. That's, that's 2 watts. These tubes should be capable of way more power than that. The fact that it's starting to clip so early and asymmetrically indicates just a bad operating point, I think. I don't think that's a matter of the voltage isn't high enough or something like that, because I think the voltage is pretty high. Probably with negative feedback, in place, this distortion will go away, you know, and it'll be decent up to about 2 watts like this, but it's still going to clip hard at 2 watts. That's just ridiculous. I mean, why even use these tubes, 7591s? We should be able to get 6 watts. No problem with these. This is wild. So I recapped it. That is all the way disconnected the old can cap and put in new ones. New and improved even, the second capacitor is now 100 microfarads. Check this out. I'm now getting like, at least out of the one channel on A, I guess that's the left channel, although, hmm. Six watts. Yowza! That's amazing. That's just from recapping, that's all I've done. Swear, pretty sure. Did it do anything else? I don't think so. Well, I am getting higher voltages. My B plus here is now 316. And the plates, which were, I recall, at 305, 308. Here's the screen grid. 275. Supply for the triodes. 277. I kept the original circuit. I kept the original transformers. The original output transformers. The original power transformer. Kept the original tubes. Just a couple of 12AX7s and then the two 7591s and a 6CA4 rectifier there on the end. You gotta add an on-off switch. I just happen to have such a thing. It has the same values of the pots and an on-off switch integral to it. Yeehaw! Let's turn it on. There is still an ever so slight hum, but that's from the transformer. There is no noise that I can hear from the speakers. So it was those filament wires. I'll show you what I did. See those beautifully twisted yellow and green wires? That is the way filament wiring is supposed to be done. It 
has a preamp, it has tone controls, bass and treble, and I've worked on those. I did modify the tone controls to make the frequency response flat with the tone controls in neutral position. And it sounds really nice. I'm really pleased with the result. Fixing the tone controls. Old frequency response, new frequency response. Put on some RCA jacks on the back. Balance, volume, and it can take two sources, either mono or stereo. I'm using the original speaker terminals right now. You know, I might replace those at some point, but just didn't feel the need at this time. The major piece of work for it was making the solid cherry pieces that adorn it. I've added the solid cherry pieces on both ends, carved as handles and solid cherry face. This one's bolted in. The side pieces I glued on with contact cement. The inlay is magnetite sand. You know, I had to work on all the mounting and whatnot, hardware and so on. It was a little bit complicated. Expanded steel bottom, Home Depot aluminum pattern sheet. These are old console, Magnavox console knobs. Sanded off the original uh, gold things and now it's just marked with a sharpie. My intention is to get a gold paint pen and repaint those. And it sounds really good. <laughs> so, so far I haven't felt a particular need to Upgrade it. Here's the Magnavox console amp that had been my bedroom amplifier. When I took those Genesis 1 speakers up there, I had been playing them down here, and I thought they sounded really nice. And so I took them up to my bedroom to use instead of my uh, AR4Xs. Just didn't sound as good. Bass wasn't as full, and I figured it must be the amp. Maybe at some point I'll change those output transformers. That would probably improve the sound substantially, especially in the bass. Adele gives us a, a good bass check. So that track is so bass heavy that you could hear the bass breaking up a little bit on that really deep spot. That is if you're using some headphones or earbuds that have good bass. Or, hey, speakers from your TV system, whatever. That issue with bass would need to be solved by larger output transformers. So, you know, as a console amp, it's limited. But literally, really, the only expense, you know, is just the random components, which are all pretty cheap. The high voltage capacitor is the most expensive of those. And of course, the labor. I didn't buy the cherry, I carved it and cut it myself. It's from a cherry tree in my backyard. So for me, the cost was negligible, except for all the labor to make it, which was substantial. Of course, it's all hand done. Well, I hope you enjoyed this reconstruction video. I suppose you could call it a restoration video. 
I know that the footage that I have doesn't cover every aspect of what I did to this amplifier, so I've tried to walk you through what I did as best I can at this point. Because I'm not taking it back off the shelf and taking it apart just to show you the insides again, and so sorry for that. You know, it's funny, I get... I read all the comments that I get on these videos, and occasionally I'll get a comment that essentially says, you should have made the video this way, or you should have done that. You should take these measurements. You should do that. And I'm like, well, but I didn't. Uh, I don't have that equipment. Want to buy me that equipment? Anyway, I'm not really complaining. It's just kind of funny. Uh, you know, the, the way people get about giving <laughs> rather strong suggestions uh, for what is free and, I'm, and that I barely get paid to do. So, anyway. Hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a like. Subscribe to the channel. Have a great day and I'll talk to you later.